anytime I want. Ha! Okay, uh, last time... <coughs> Uh, last time I think I'd figured out w how to read the int 16 values that r represent nations, and so today, uh, now, not, not today, because third stream of the day. Uh, so now we'll go ahead and actually implement that, and I don't think it's going to be that bad. So um, it's actually not this bvals0 plus bvals1. It looks like the uh, there's like some sort of uh, ones complement going on. I'm not going to be pretend to be too smart about it, but... Um, it looks like the, let's actually look at this again real quick. Um, it looks like the first number here is actually, you're supposed to add one to it and, uh, no, I'm sorry, subtract it from 255. Let me see what's going on here real quick. Um, right, so this is the high bit here, except instead of being written in, uh, in hex, it's written sort of in one's complement hex. In other words, uh, we take the negative of this number and uh, we, uh, we, well, we take 255 minus this number, multiply that by 256, and then add this. At least that's what I think it is, and I'm, I'm fairly certain of that just because of the way things are looking. Uh, but we actually can test that, and uh, I'll show you how we test that in just a minute. So here we have uh, the uh, B vowels. Instead of B vowels, it'll be 255 minus B vowels times 256 plus 1. And then really, we just need to run this program again. And this time I do have my... Um, Oh yeah, I just call it testing now. So let's make sure this is at least a little bit useful. Um, well, that was not what I expected at all. Okay. Yep, not even close. Wow. Um, so that screwed that up totally. Oh, another thing uh, I meant to do earlier. Um, we see a lot of numbers like this that are very, very small. Uh, they're not the same as the error numbers, which are negative, um, but, but we do need to get rid of them. And I, because, and when we can prove that we need to get rid of them, because if every single tile, if every single data point had this many people, the total would still be very, very low, it, because it's 39 digits of zeros, and you know, that's, there's not nowhere near that. Um, so we can actually get rid of numbers that are below, uh, let's say, 1e to the minus 38. So let's, let's make that 1e to the minus. Well, this is 5. Um, so this is a bigger number, but it's still effectively 0. So what we're going to do here is instead of saying less than 0, we're going to say less than... Okay. Now let's see if that actually helps give us any better uh, sort of uh, output here. Um, well, we, we're getting numbers that aren't totally ridiculous. Okay. So, unfortunately, my, my thinking was I'd figured out the, uh, the, the scheme they were using uh, for int 16, and I have not. Um, so, what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to actually print them out separately. We're going to figure this out, even if it kills, well, you. Um... Yeah, we're printing out AVAL, which AVAL is the, so we have latitude, longitude, AVAL is the population data, BVAL is this, but I think we're going to do a little bit better than that this time. We're going to do um, BVAL 0 and BVAL 1. I think uh, that should help us a little bit more in terms of debugging, or less, I don't really know, but let's see what that does. Um, and once again, my audience is entirely fictional, which is good, because my fictional audience dislikes me less. They, they still dislike me, but it's less. Okay, um, that would have been probably been better. Oh, you know what? Actually, did I forget to rerun it? No, no, I didn't. I didn't. Okay. Um, so let's, let's do this. Let's do testing, two, 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 temp1 text. Then we can do a sort on temp1 text. This is a million entries. Um, hopefully that'll be enough to do something. This does. Oh, actually, in this case, let's see. We want one, two, three, four. So we're going to start off by sorting by the the fourth one, and then actually, yeah. What? That didn't do what I wanted. So if we, we can do it, uh, this. But if these two numbers match, we should be able to do something like this. Uh, yes, that worked. So we're doing a two uh, two key sort now. 
So we're starting off with this 255, 255 value, which I don't like. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do these both forward. I probably still won't like that. Okay, it's zero, zero, oh yeah. Um, oh cool, so this is what I was hoping to find. Uh, zero with small numbers after it. And these, because these actually appear in the DBF file, and in the when you look at QGIS, you actually see these as being actual numbers. Zero, four is in fact the smallest one, so this is pretty good stuff. I, well, actually, th these aren't good then. Um, two way to do this, we could look at, oh, I guess we still have QGIS up. Um, I think we can look at the attribute table. And I didn't mean to do that. Zoom to layer. Come on. Um, properties. These values. There is a place where these values are actually described. And um, yes, all right. Um, so it'd be really great if I could somehow get values of let's see if there's one of these tools that actually gives you um um identify features oh this is awesome or would be awesome if it freaking had a wider screen oh come on alright let's see if we can I'm going to have to make this a little bit smaller just to get the whole thing in there. I kind of figured there would be an identify feature somewhere. Okay. Seriously. Okay, well, this can't be any wider than 800. Why is this 48 by... Oh, that's the upper left corner, not the width. Okay, that should be close enough. Now give me what I want. Zero. That's hopefully not. Yeah. Clearly this is not. Um, let's try it like this. GPW. FID. Yeah, I don't think this is doing what I want. So now if I knew what I was doing, I could actually... Um, get rid of this little window here that I brought up. Jesus fucking Christ, how wide is this QGIS piece of shit? And really, by the way, this was something that annoyed me earlier. I actually have to switch my screen resolution uh, on my real machine to deal with this. And this is just bad, bad programming, bad design by the QGIS people. They don't need to have... <sighs> they don't need to have this big a screen. Oh wow, you can't shrink it down beyond a certain... Is that really the case? Wow. Either that or I've done something that's made it to think it can't uh, be shrunk down anymore. And maybe I can shrink it down once I get to one panel. Um, but really, just really horrible design. And I think I've mentioned it to the QGIS people, but you know, they're all freaking anthro misanthropes. I think I'm just moving this around. Now. Oh, there we go! Yay! Um, they're all they're all sadists. All software developers, except me, are sadists. Uh, I'm a misogynist, so yeah, a little bit different. Okay. All right. So now I want to identify feature layer. Yeah. See what. what Attribute band one, but what is the attribute? What is the value of the attribute? Because it can't be one for everything. Oh wow! I guess when you when you make the uh, when you add a table or something, it automatically resizes itself. Uh, QGIS resizes itself to be bigger. That's not good. That's actually terrible behavior. Um, okay, let's see. So this may not be well. Let's see if right clicking does anything. Yeah, that just tells me what file we're in. Not cool. Uh, let's see. Zoom to layer, zoom full. Refresh. Ad identify features. Deselect features. Highlight pinned labels. This is this is a lot of good stuff if you knew how to use it, which I do not. 
Um, composer manager, new print composer, save as open new. Yeah. Really nothing. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the sort of hand icon. Whoa, that's not what I meant to do. So this should just let me move around the data and stuff. That's that's fine. Um, all right, let's see if we can get some of the data from the layer. There should somewhere be an attribute table here. That cause that, but if there's not, there's a DBF file we have uh, that, that can help us out here. Um, yeah, very nice. Let's look at the properties, but this is not what we want. Metadata. We don't have any histogram. That's actually kind of cute. Um, transparency. Style. Yeah, somewhere in here there is some metadata that we that we have. I'll look for it a little, little bit longer if we don't find that. Um, create layer, add layer, image, copy style, save as layer definition file. Ah. Um, let's see if we have it here. Raster calculator, projections, conversions, miscellaneous, GDL tool settings. Um, yeah, good stuff. No idea how to use it. Um, okay, but there's a DBF file we can use to 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 get the same effect here, and actually. If we really wanted to, and this is horrible misuse, of course, um, we could change these. Let's get rid of well, it's actually five colors. Okay, good. And then uh, we could actually just um, we could still use random colors, I guess. Oh, that's actually kind of cute. But here we could change the uh, the values. The um, on yeah so here we could say for example four actually gotta be careful four to four here and this could be like zero come on zero to like f oh I'm sorry these are values aren't they um huh so actually it's equal interval um so really for equal interval we should have like I should be able to change this and this and this and this and this. This works most is this map's gonna turn blue. Or when I say blue I mean red. Um so this should in fact in theory, uh even though the label's gonna be twenty three, is gonna be country number four. Let's see if there is a uh not looking too good. Nothing on the map looks to be appears to be four or yellow. But let's take a look here real, real quickly and see what's going on. Okay, so we have one country here that is not um, in the red color, and let's take a look to see what that yellowish color means. And so that is color. That is country number four. Uh, there's apparently no country. That actually sort of makes it. I don't think there really is a country five, six, and seven. So country number four is this country. Um, sure, it'd be nice to know what it was, but you know that's that's kind of asking too much. We don't. I don't recognize my global shapes. Um, I think we can do a little bit better here by making this eight, making this twelve. For some reason, they like to jump by uh, by fours. I think. La 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 la. And actually, that's not going to help anybody because it's going to be that's going to be like, okay, oh, undo, undo, too late. Okay, well, that didn't work. Okay, so now um, country four. We're doing a lot of reverse engineering here, which is probably more than we need to be doing. There is a DBF file here, though. Um, yeah. And you can't really read a DBF file directly, but it's clear from here that uh, you know all these things have have uh, numbers and stuff. 
And I'm going to bring it up in a, in a better way here in just a sec, but this is just sort of the indication. And there's also a VAT DBF file, but I don't know what the hell that is. So I'm, I'm, so I'm kind of hesitant to uh, tiff.vat. Oh, that looks to be very similar to the other file. Okay, so I know Numeric can bring up um, a DBF files because I've done it. Unfortunately, I don't have Numeric installed on this machine, and I don't necessarily want to build it on this machine. So let's see if we can just have Emacs, which can do everything, apparently. Um, um, national Grid Identifier List dot... Ooh, unshiny. Let's see if we have a DBF mode. We do not. Okay. So let's see, how do we look at this file? There's tons of ways to do it. Uh, I don't, this is ugly. I mean, we could actually try to read it from there, but it's going to be too ugly. So what can we do with a freaking DBF file? Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that... Let's see if GDAL info recognizes it. Oh. Well, la -ti da there's apparently more than one. Uh, oh, right, because there'll be one for the. Um, okay, so GDAL info doesn't recognize it. OGR info might. Uh, ah! And. This is going to. AL is going to give us a lot of information about this, more than we actually want. Yeah. Um, but it's going to also give us the important information it's going to give us is country for Afghanistan, which it kind of looked like it was. Um, yeah, we really do not want the... I uh, think if we do this... And I know it's spelled polygon. This will give us pretty much what we need, uh, and with a little bit of extra data. Andorra, Angola is country number 24, 31, 32, 56. I don't know how they get these numbers, but, you know, they should be okay. Um, so if I set something to be 84 now, I should be able to uh, get the nation of Belize. Let's see if we can do that. And then, of course, we have to go back to our... Um, our code or pro code and see how we can uh, import this information into there that 84 is for example Belize um, I have no idea what the hell I'm doing but I never do there okay properties and we said 84 2 and this will be 85 no, but hang on this actually has to be 83 because we don't want it to go lower than so 84 85 so if this works, we should see Belize highlighted in a nice, lovely color. That's kind of strange. Um, let me take a look at that again. Oh, I think maybe I forgot to um, remove one of the uh, remove the last uh, things in it. And once again, it's later. I wonder if there's a quick way to get to that properties. No, there does not appear to be a shortcut. Yeah. So I said. Um, uh, what the hell? 83, 84, 85. This has to be 82, and this has to be 81. Okay. So the everything b above 85 and 80, below 81 are going to be in a single color. So this should show us um, the nation of... It's somewhere in South America, I think. Is that it? The little tiny dot there? And apparently I cannot zoom the way I used to be able to zoom. Oh, come on. Oh, I can do a selection. No, I can't. There should be a way to actually make a selection here. Touch zoom and pan doesn't work because this is not a, a tablet. Um, I think that little yellow dot there is Belize. 
but anyway. I also think we're done with QGIS. It's kind of getting on my nerves. Okay. Alrighty. So, um, so this is this is the basically what's going to tell us what's what, and there's probably even a better way of doing it than uh, than just OGR my info minus A. Oh, but that does work. So I mean, um, so that does work. So this now, let's see if we can um, let's find a fairly large country. That is the United States. Not that. Not that. Not that. Not them. Us. Okay. So the integer value for us is 840. So how does that help us? Over here, we're only going to print if um, I still compute. Yeah, I still compute bval. Unless bval equal equal. What was our name again? 840. So at the very least, this should only give us points from the United States. And it might give us very little because um, not every point is in the United States. It should be, but it's not. That's kind of distressing. Um, What might be even more distressing is I think this is Alaska. 57 latitude? No. All right, where the hell is this? We shall ask OpenStreetMap. Okay, not cool. Um, I know it's kind of like we're reverse engineering more than we need to. Um, all right. Which means I'm actually not looking at the B valves correctly. I, I understand that's the issue. All righty, let's, uh, let's do something else here. Um, I think we can show latitudes and longitudes. Um, oh, come on. What I'm going to try to do is find a bounding box for the United States, only print out those values that are in that bounding box, and then see how it is referred to. Of course, we're going to get parts of Canada, Mexico, Cuba, um, whatever the hell these are. I think those are the West Indies. Um, so it's not going to be perfect, but let's first see if I can get a map with latitudes and longitudes. Um, and of course we could also I use an existing um, Seriously? I think we looked at m BC my tile earlier, uh, by which I mean we did not look at BC my tile earlier. It might have been on on the other machine. Um, get tile. If this works correctly, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and bookmark this sucker. I want a map. This is a map. And this is a server. This is a piece of crap that I wrote. That basically tells you um, each slippy tiles left. You know, okay. So we're going to use our uh, our longitude boundary of minus one two three point seven five. Um, okay, we're going to use the east longitude value of. Yeah, we'll probably go as far as mean. Um, minus 67.5. But if you're thinking, hey, maybe I've got the uh, latitude and longitude computed incorrectly, you may be right. Um, let's look at the north lat then. 
The north latitude of the United States is actually very close to 48 degrees, I think. It's like almost a perfect 48 degrees. Um, or do I mean 49 degrees? I mean 49 degrees. Whatever. Canada doesn't care. And we don't have a really well-defined south latitude, but it's like about 25 degrees, I think. That's, that's where you go into Key West and stuff. But let's see if we can get a good number here. Pick up these guys. Mid-latitude 27. Oh, uh, let's give it, let's say 25. The wave's going to win anyway. Uh, 25. Okay. So now, la da la da 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 these are all less lawn greater than or equal to west lawn. There's a pun in there somewhere. And, and, um, there's also probably a better way of testing this. And, and, unless that's, okay, lat is less than or equal to north lat, and, and, lat is greater than or equal to south lat, next. Okay. Uh, and if you want to learn some good programming techniques, just don't be here. Because this is hideous. La 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 That's the uh, Underpant Gnome song. Okay, and nothing. So something is very suspicious here. Latitude is less than N lat. Then equal to south lat. Mm. This suggests that maybe I have not computed my latitude and longitude correctly. If I'm never going to get values that are within this range. Um, so maybe I should have been sorting on those things instead. So let's go ahead and do testing again. Run to that's the theme to Tiny Toon Adventures. All right. So let's go ahead and the first thing that I'm writing in is I think latitude in this case because I'm trying to be friendly to. Okay, so why don't we do this now? Let's let's think we might have found it. Now, of course, I don't need to specify one because it's the first field, but anyway. So, so minus 55, that's actually a pretty reasonable lower limit for the latitude. Uh, and I probably should have done our tail for this because it's going to be a million here. 78 degrees and 80 degrees, 81 degrees, 83 degrees. That actually might be okay because we do have people living as far north as uh, Thule. Let's see where Thule is actually. I don't know if this is going to actually work. I may not have the correct thing installed here. Oh, there it is. 77 degrees. So I think Alert Canada may be um, that's the furthest north city I know about. Yeah, that's getting up there. So that this is fine. The latitudes, not a problem. So now we will su suspect the latitudes. Minus 179. Oh, these numbers are going really, really, really fast for something that's a million lines long. Oh, it might just because the Pacific Ocean isn't that well populated. Okay. 167, 168. Well, okay, these look fine. Um, so I guess the question is, how the hell do you miss a target that large? And the only thing I'm thinking is I'm doing... Oh, yeah, here's why. And I kind of was going to rename these variables anyway. I don't have to rename these variables. The problem is the variable I'm testing against is not lawn. It is LNG. And uh, it just reminded me that I, that I should have been doing this. Okay, rock and roll. Uh, da -da. I already did that one, didn't I? Da -da. Da -da. Criminal bogey march. Okay. Mm 
mother fudger. There appears to be no consistency among the numbers on the right hand. Um, which makes me wonder... It's got to be two bytes, right? Because it's int 16. Unless I misunderstand what int 16 is. And I'm just looking at sort of random wacky data. Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, of course, it's hard to see when you're looking at just a very small part. Eight, these, oh, yeah, right. These are the ones that actually fall within the United States. Okay, so now I'm actually suspicious that maybe the e header file wasn't created correctly, uh, which actually was also suggested by um, by the QGIS when I tried to open it, although that didn't apply to the main file, just to the symbolic link, which is weird. Okay, this is uh, not good. Okay, let's do this. Um, we're going to print the last two fields, and then we're going to sort by frequency, uh, because that actually might, uh, you know, if, if it, because we're looking at random values, it might be that one value is very predominant. Um, And that value would be the United States. So let's let's do this real quickly. A concordance. Um, no, it doesn't look like there's any value. I mean, the zero zero value, but that doesn't really count. Yeah, it looks like a lot of values just appear one time. So at this point, I'm suspicious that we did not create the EHDR file correctly. So let us uh, take a look at uh, GPW for for the national grid. National grid identifier. There's a shape file, which we could use if we wanted to, by the way. Let me identify the TIFF file here. Uh, even though it has warnings, 43.2, okay, so that's, that's fine. That's not unexpected. Let's do a GDAL info here. Okay, minimum value for max, blah, 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 blah. No data value, 32768, uh, negative. Um, Statistics, max, mean, minimum, type equals int 16. To me, that means a 16-bit integer, um, which means you get two bytes per integer. Clearly, that is not correct. Um, okay, let's do what we did before, uh, just to make things life as bad as possible for ourselves. Let's go ahead and download the National Identifier Grid as a uh, ASCII 2 file. Because we really hate you, that's why. And, you know, who, uh, this is actually should be documentation for everything. So, let's go to over here. Um, cool, I have it three times. That is an insane waste of time. All right. We just need it once. Uh, population count documentation. I'm just looking for the national grid. Okay. First of all, I want to see what's going to happen if we do it. And uh, so again, we're going to have multiple files here. Not surprising. I'm using an expandable disk, though I think at some point I'm going to run out of space. And let's take a look at one of these 
ASCII files here. Right, so the no, no data value, as we expected, is, is just all over the place there. Um, yeah. So now this is slightly smaller than um, than the whole thing. I mean, it's, the file is huge, but the amount of data is smaller. So now maybe QGIS can help us out here. Dun, dun, dun. And this always happens. I don't know why. What it, what it means? I can probably get rid of it somehow. Okay. It took me a second to realize this is Europe because it's in the wrong color. Um. Okay, the min. See, the problem here, the min is this number only because that's the that's the no uh, no data value. And there should be a way to actually um, make this. Yeah, this is going to be better, but it's still not going to be right because all of these countries have fairly high values for for their uh, for their identity number. Shiny. Okay. All right. Come on, show me something pretty. Yeah. It's an ugly map of Europe. I mean, Europe itself is ugly, but this map makes it look worse. Okay. So I'll have only my imaginary audience. Um. So, so it look it's looking more and more like um, whatever the hell I'm doing is incorrect. Uh, however, I converted this to eHeader did not work. Uh, so rather, so we need to see how. Mm, yes, this bugs me. Um, and the obvious choices are that int 16 actually means three bytes, or it means can't actually mean one byte. That's that's kind of a problem, because we do have more than 256 identifiers here, um, and we do have minus 32768, which, technically speaking, that is that is going to fit into 16 bits, two bytes. Um, so that 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 seems like that's what it should be. Um, But something is uh, is amiss, obviously, because we're getting a very, very different values uh, for what I perceive to be the United States. So let's 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 let's. Let's see if we can do. I'm going to translate it again this time. GDL translate. Okay, it's not in my history. That's okay. Um, Format e header minus output type. I'm going to try byte, see what that does. Actually, I'm going to try int 16, but this will give me the exact same result I had before. Um, and we want the 30 second projection as a TIFF file. As a Okay, what happened to our TIFF file? Oh, right, because we were actually over here when we did that. So, GDAL translate. HDR, I actually spell it right this time. This was supposed to be the easy one. Um. It's sort of like you can't imagine it 
being any different than it already is. It's in 16 in, in 16 out. All right. So maybe we got a file corruption going on here, which is very, very rare. Um, so the way to do that is we're going to go ahead and SHA-1 sum these suckers. The one I did yesterday, dot tiff. I probably could have just done it to all of them, huh? And output each dr. And I think we're going to show that these have the same SHA-1 sum, so something else ugly is going on. Yep. So, in 16 in, in 16 out, um, the size makes it clear that each each by each value takes up two bytes. So, kind of confused now. Um, There actually might be a way to do this. I have a program that basically lets um, that lets me color in a file like this. Uh, I might have showed it to you guys yesterday, but maybe not. All right, it's called bin the gif, and um, it'll just show me what is inside this output.ehdr file. And if it looks tr totally horrible, we'll know something is wrong. If it looks okay, then we'll just need to figure out how I screwed up. Um, I need to. Do I just call it bin to gif? No, it can't be that. Never that good. Oh, bin to image it might be. Ooh. All right, what is it? Ooh, did I put it in a subdirectory? Am I that smart? I am that smart. Uh, bc bin to gif. Oh, and I need to look at it because I forget how the options are. Um, which reminds me of some, something I need to do later. I need to add a help to most of my programs. Um, and that will become a project to do later. That's, n that's not actually hard. I've done it for other stuff. Um, okay. So get back over here. It requires a... It requires a width, byte size. Okay. And we know our width is 43,200. We know our byte size is 2. Um, and the name of the file we're looking at is going to be output. output.eh header. And by the way, the output of this program um, is actually a fly script. And a fly script is not like a fly grill. It is a script that can be used by... Do I have fly installed here? No, I don't. And fly is a pain to install. Okay, so that's not going to help us any either. Uh... Might as well kill that job then. Well, uh, <laughs> in theory, I could uh, put that file over my main machine, run, fly on it, and see what's going on. Um, I'm delaying for time in the hope that it just actually happens, so I don't have to worry about it. But it's not going to happen. Okay, so if fly doesn't work, we're not going to be able to get that done here. Yeah. Alright. Um, so what we want to sort of do is look at the data and see if, you know, um, look at the data as an image and, uh, and see what's going on there. And... Um, I'm not really seeing a way of doing that right now. Um, so let's let's go crazy over here. What if we were to use int 32? Uh, yep, it does not exist here. 
Interesting. Yeah. So now at this size, the should, number should be four. And it is. So now, we've created a file that should be too big, but I mean, it might just have uh, like lots of zeros in it and stuff. Uh, this is not what I expected. All right. So let's go ahead and do a quick back real quickly of... I need to move some aliases over here. Um, so I'm going to change it. So now... Now, if I were smart, I would just make like a size for bvals instead of changing it manually. Um, damn it. I am going to be smart, sorry. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. No, this should be fine. Because i is just going to be a number. Um, That shouldn't be a problem. Because they both have the same resolution, so that shouldn't be an issue. So, let's see. I'm going to call it B size. And for those of you who just thought of breasts, good for you. And it's going to be four now. It's, we, it was two before, but... Um, okay, so B air is going to be... Come on, reformat. Um... Size. Okay. I mean, I can leave that B vowels is there, but we're not going to really look at it. Um, so now we're going to look at all four of these values and see if maybe we have found uh, we have found uh, the glitch in the matrix or whatever is the official term for that. Okay, and again, we're just going to be limiting ourselves to the United States. Yeah, close enough. And... I like these nice little pauses with you. I hope you like them too. Alright. I'm not printing all four of them, am I? Oh, B Val, not no, B Vals. Unfortunately, it's looking worse and worse. Uh, I mean, unless we get very lucky on this last one. Yeah. However they're storing this data... It's beyond me. But of course... Let's go crazy, boys and girls. Let's go to Byte. Now we should get an error message, well, of course we won't, saying that it's the data is not big enough to hold in a byte. But, uh, you know, whatever. And that actually is one byte of data per... Um, okay, that's good. Chinese euros. Let's once again rock the casbah here, but this time b-size will be... Guess what it is. That's right, it's one. And which means printing out these other B vowels is useless, but it's also harmless. But there's something funky going on here. I mean, there's there's something just really ugly. 97, da 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 da. The national grid sucks, apparently. Or I'm not reading it correctly. I think that's... So why don't we go ahead and just do a sort minus K4N to see some... bunch of zero values. Yeah. Oh, actually, I think uh, what I meant to do here was just do a sort of a unique minus C on this stuff. But, uh, nah, it's all over the place. 
Yeah, and there's 8,000 rows here, so. Yeah, so apparently um, the national grid, how the conversion I did of it is wrong. I mean, obviously it looks fine. Um, well, actually, let me do that real quick. Let's see if I can QGIS. Am I, am I running QGIS? I'm going to kill QGIS in more ways than one. Um, and I should always just be able to discard. Okay, well, let's take a look at... Uh, because it really doesn't seem to want to like this format. Oh my god. That is interesting. Uh, that it actually seems to know. That is actually amazing that I'm getting that. All right, let's actually then go to Properties. Uh, min 23 to 255, we're going to go to Single Band Pseudo Color. We're going to go to Random Colors. And we can actually not use 255 here because there's fewer than that values. But, I mean, we'll see what's going on. And even from the preview, it looks like uh, it's good stuff here. All right, so Ooh. yeah, I mean, we are getting like redundant colors for a couple of countries, but that that's okay because this means this this byte value that I have in here is telling me something about the country it's in which is um, which which is bizarre because according to over here because of when I just when, I, when we just look at it with this uh, this sort of thing uh, it does not seem to be consistent so I'm not sure why that is uh, yeah because 49 for well actually let's go ahead and do what I wanted to do earlier see if one appears a lot more than the other. Actually, another short minus NR in there. Okay, like this. Yep, and again, there's really no, well, yeah, there's really no takeover color there. It's lots of different colors appearing at once. So I'm having some trouble understanding this. So somehow, QGIS recognizes this output EHDR file and understands what it's trying to tell us. Um, I mean, that's just whack. I don't really know how to deal with that. Hmm. I think I have OD alias to something more useful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so one of the few places we actually have values that are not stupid and that looks pretty consistent there. 124, 124, 124. Um. Alright, I'm stumped. Am I reading the wrong file or something? That would be sad. Oh, my effing F. The reason none of this makes sense is because I've been reading the data from file A. I've been seeking in B, reading from A. So this, this is a big bonehead move I made here. This was pretty damn stupid. So now it looks like everything we did before is should work. Uh, we have wasted a, an infinite amount of time. Um, 
and I feel really bad about that. And I'm not going to go back and edit the other videos to tell you that basically there's a very minimal error here that caused all of this because programming is painful. Okay. So now it's pretty much going to go really, really well. And I don't suspect there will be much of an issue. And then we can actually start coding. So far we've just tried to figure out what, what the data means. 131, 131, we're seeing a lot of 131 here. And I'm going to bet that if I did a... Uh, we're going to see a lot of 131. So 246, 131, yeah, that's, that's our country. Okay. Fantabulous. So I'm going to go ahead and make a quick back of this because I'm in, I just feel really stupid. And then we're going to fix it. So let's see what we can do here. Um some point you need to wonder why it's 120. Oh, actually, I do know why it's 124. It's because we have two. It's actually two that we need. So let me actually re, uh, redo this, the e header stuff. And the OT is going to be int 16 the way we want it to be. And the output is going to be called natgrid.ehdr. Let me make sure I'm using that grid.hdr because I'm a complete moron. Yes, yay. Okay. So, let's see. A buff, B buff, B val, B val equals... Okay, so now I am going to actually want to... look at the two B valves, and I think one of them is going to be high bit, one of them is going to be low bit. I mean, I just don't see this as being an issue anymore. Um, and I probably didn't even need to pipe it somewhere. I could have just looked, lessified it. Lessified it. Lessified it. Okay. Have I done the really stupid thing of misspelling B valves again? No. Hang on. Hang on. Oops, split B buff. B size. We did set B size to 2, right? Nope. We did not. What are the brains of a crouton? That's not one of the good croutons either. It's one of those healthy whole wheat croutons that you get. Okay. So now what I'm seeing here is two... So it looks like the second byte is the high byte, which I expected. And if I'm correct, 2 times 256 plus 131 should be 840, which is the United States code. Nope, it's not. So what does that mean? 2 times... I think, though, I'm still happy with this. Yeah, I think I'm okay with this. So it's going to be... First byte plus two fifty six times second byte. And now we're not gonna do that, we're not gonna do that. Uh, we are going to do this. And this will end our testing step. This will be our the end of our testing step. Then we can actually start doing some freaking code. Won't that be great? That was sarcasm. I can't imagine you didn't recognize it as being such, so I didn't say anything. Oh, country 999 is probably not a good country to start with. 894. And here we see that you'll notice the values are actually pretty close to each other. Um, it's believable that these numbers would be in the same country. Maybe. Uh, 887? Um, yeah. I think I'm okay with that. Let's see what... Who is 840? Nobody. So I might have misremembered or something. Okay, so this is good stuff. This is good, I think. Um, 
862. Yeah, and let's go ahead and get rid of this. Um, so now if we actually trust this, which I'm not sure I do actually. Um, we're ready to actually begin the task of of okay what the hell country is is that Antarctica? it can't be Antarctica well it mm, well, let's find out what country this is And wow, I lost open. I could have sworn I had OpenStreetMap kept open. I'm going to pin it this time. And we'll leave our question pinned because it's it's our question. Oh la la, Venezuela. Okay. Okay, now let's... The running the program is going to... Let's actually write the program. Um, but running is going to take forever. Uh, so while we do that, we're going to look to see if we can figure out how to convert these numbers to um, these uh, numbers, country numbers, into actual country names. Okay. This looks really ugly, and I'm tempted to put this into a function. And we're going to keep random values for right now, because we are. Um... And in fact, if we do this, uh, no, let's not do that. Um, yeah, this is this is ugly code here, I, but I think I'm going to leave it this way. Okay, so now that we've gone through all of this, um, how are we actually going to solve the problem? And the answer is we're going to take the uh, latitude and longitude value, convert it to spherical coordinates, and then keep track of the x, the total of the x, y, and z vectors for each country divide by the total number of population for that country, uh, which we will also keep track of. Okay? So, um, and I think we're going to call this variable, we need to declare this one outside because it's, it's going to be a two nested. My country, tis of thee. Humorous comment. Okay. So over here, and of course the country is going to be the BVAL. So over here what we're going to do is say country BVAL. Oh, sorry. First thing we need to do is convert this. Um, convert from spherical coordinates to, um, to, to uh, Cartesian coordinates. And I'm pretty sure I've already done that. Uh, so let's just use that function, spherical to XYZ. Um, beautiful. And <coughs> theta is the longitude in this case, phi is the latitude. All is always one because it's a, it's a virtual sphere that we're talking about. And we do want it converted as degrees. Um, Okay, and then we can say country BVAL. And again, if you're really, really clever, you could probably do this, in a, well, you could do this in a for loop for sure. Uh, because you could just name these like three elements of an array. But again, so now what we also need to know is the total, uh, which is equal to the, oh, this isn't good, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, right, the x just tells you where the, where the uh, direction pointing is. We need to also, of course, multiply by the population at this point, which is, uh, who gives a fuck? No, it's aval. Um, right, so it's going to be aval. So this this weights the um, avalanche. This weights the uh, 
the vectors by the population. Um, we're going to call this pop. Now the problem is, of course, these are UN adjusted numbers, so we really do expect to see the population according to the grid equal the population according to the UN, according to official sources. That's something that GeoNames does not do. Well, it does, but we, d we have no way of knowing it. Um, so we add that to the population. And this is probably not really important, but it's kind of because it doesn't even re reflect an area. But we do want to sort of keep track of how many points on the data grid belong to this nation. And now that I've said that, um, now each square is not equal, but if you multiply by the cosine of the latitude in degree in radians, of course, uh, it is equal. So why don't we say this will give us the area. This will give us the because that's more complicated. Um, but it will give us something that should be proportional to the area of the nation. And that is going to be cosine. We need to add to it, of course. Cosine of lat times. I'm almost sure I defined degree here somewhere. I do, oh, no, I don't. So this is in degree, so degrad will change it to, uh, to radians so that we can evaluate it. OK, awesome. So um, right, so we go through the va various values. We, we do this. We, um, and so basically, then we're done with this loop here. And all of the stuff below we, are, we have looked at before, so we, we can ignore it. Uh, by the way, at some point, we're going to write this all up for someone. Well, I mean, for, uh, for the person who asked the question. And we are going to start making comments on how our answer is going to look, uh, but not right now. Okay. So now we're just going to go through all the stuff we've just bothered to create. And there's really clever ways of doing this that I. So Dawson, this is going to be. We, we're going to improve on this, but this is just going to sort of tell us a little bit about the country. Um. Now, if I've done this correctly, this should actually give us like a list of X, Y, Z, total pop, population, all that good stuff. Um, and again, we're only looking at a million points, not the full 900 million that we actually have total. Um, And we c I think we can clean this function up, too, now, because we know this is the correct way of doing it. Did I have to do a bytes reverse? Oh, my god. I'm going to leave it like this, although this reverse could go up here, obviously. Um, because I'm going to preserve what, what the guy did. So now... Yeah, we do need to leave that there. We don't need to leave this there. Oh, I see. The other uh, little bracket thing there was commented out because it was part of the eye. Okay, so if I've done this correctly and I have no other debug statements, this should print out something vaguely interesting. To, to whatever vaguely interesting means. The only problem is if there's a you know, if there's an error in it, it would have shown up quicker than this. Um, so let's see what this does. That's not looking too good. I don't know why I said country B val or I, I. This is country I, obviously. Uh -huh. So, and just because it's so hard to compute these totals, I might just want to store these totals somewhere before we start computing the center of mass and all that good stuff, the stuff we actually want. Okay, yep, it's not what I wanted. Um, oddly enough, this might do something different because it's not quoted. Let's find out. Hmm. 
Nope, didn't help. Okay, um... So we take Country of I, which is a hash itself. And debug I. Actually, we need to put this in the one. And this really should work. But it's, it's ugly and I was hoping to avoid it. Okay, rock and roll. By the way, another issue we might run into is that not all nations are independent, and we do want to count their subterritories uh, as part of the uh, as part of the deal. That's not cool. All right, hang on. Yeah, I, per minus W is probably I should be running that. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and because I'm making enough of these minor issues that it's going to bug me. Unfortunately, now I'm going to get a ton of errors because Pro minus W is extremely uh, verbose. Yep. Oh. We don't actually need those anymore, do we? Let's go get rid of those. Variable res will not stay shared. And that's actually complaining about BC lib. Um, which is bad. Argument seek set isn't numeric. Yes, it is. Lying piece of shit. Um, all right. So country 100. Uh, y is this. The x vector is this. The population is that. Uh, it would have been nice maybe to convert these values back into latitude and longitude so we could see what country 100 is. But we're getting there. This is pretty much the idea we, we need now. Um, so the next step will be once we compute all these values for a country, uh, we will uh, basically find the central vector, which is the XYZ vector divided by the population. The central vector will generally not be on the sphere. It will be inside the sphere. and But that's okay. Um, so, uh, let's see, so the actual, uh, let's see, vector, blah, 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 actually, we can actually use that vector, and we don't necessarily even have to divide by the population, um, we just need to project it, but anyway, that's, uh, that's a thing. So I think, now here's the problem, I think this is the correct way to do things. Uh, but it, now I'm going to run it, and it's going to it's going to take a while to run. There's like a billion points here, a billion points of light, um, not light, but you know, billion points of points. So this, if I have something wrong here, it's going to be a big deal. So now I'm going to cheat because I have done this using geonames before. So let's um, let's see what I compute. Um, yeah, so I get the zero y, the population total. I don't even bother to count the number of cities or points we get in there. So this looks pretty good to me, because this is the main loop of the, the program, and it, it does, uh, and it does what we want. So I think we're good. Uh, now remember, we're just going to print out the values first, and then, then, then parse them. So let me make sure we can print them out correctly. And for finally, we're actually going to use a print statement instead of a debug. And I don't think we need to do it like this. Let's see. Um, yeah, this is actually a horrible format over here. This is not what we want. Uh, the format we want is going to be like, uh, oh, I hate to say JSON, but it's going to be JSON. Um, or at the very least, keys and values put together. Let, there's a way to do that, actually. And I hope this is it. Otherwise, it's going to look pretty darn stupid. And if that doesn't work, I mean, we could do it explicitly, obviously. Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to avoid that. 
because Perl has some nice little ways of printing hashes and stuff. Yeah, that's not cool. Okay, all right. Alrighty. Um, yeah, we're not gonna. Um, do we actually care? No, I guess we do need I. Uh, no, no, right, 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 sorry. Uh, push this J country IJ. And then when we actually print it out, though, after we've done this, um, Boy, if that works, I'll be surprised. But eventually stuff like this does work. And a million is too many to... to um, I was going to tee it to temp one text, but I don't want to see a million rows of text. All right, boys and girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I forgot to print a new line in there, didn't I? You betcha. Okay. Now once we get this working, I'm going to run the whole thing. We're probably going to go off stream for a bit because I have nothing else to say and it's going to take a while to get this all done. And we're not going to save it to a temp directory because obviously we don't want it deleted by temp info or any of those temp delete or any of those programs that uh, clean up the temp directories. Okay. Yeah, this actually... Mm. This actually is ugly. Let's, let's do this. Push list. So we're going to make it just a very nice little... Uh, I mean, this is actually so close to JSON that I kind of just want to make it JSON now. And uh, eventually we'll have to write a program to read this. Maybe we'll actually use this program, uh, you know, have a subroutine or something that does that. Okay, I need to stop using minus W. I'm getting kind of sick of it. But it does not going to hurt this. Okay, let's see. Man. All right. Now, one of the key uh, things about programming is to futz around with everything as long as possible. So, um, I'm call this CC, comma, list in the list. We're going to do pretty much like JSON. And then we're going to print So this isn't actually going to be true JSON because we don't have a, like a meta object, but each line is going to be JSON-ish, which is which is which just doesn't hurt anything, I don't think. Um, that I did not expect at all. Oh, here we are. Yeah, CC12, Y this, PRE this, points this, X this, pop this, Z this. Um. Looking pretty good. Um, so now we need the bulk of the calculation, uh, and we're not going to. Uh, we are now going to do the the calculation for all forty three thousand two hundred times twenty six thousand five hundred dots, and we are now going to actually do it somewhere not in temp. Let's do it over here. Oh, testing actually has a debug built into it. Um, uh, 
So now, God willing, this it's not going to do anything right away because it it the main loop takes forever, pretty much. Um, and we could have had it debug something like you know. Uh, now tempted to have it debug something just to make sure things are working okay. So yay, I'm gonna screw this up. I don't know if I need to remove, I will go ahead and remove pop center data. Okay, now let's get rid of any debugging lines we don't want, which is good. And in here we will throw in a, oh. <whistles> Dodge the bullet. So if we're going to say, um, I think uh, the total is uh, 43,200 times this is, so if we have it print every 1 million, that should be fine. That's just going to be a debug statement. That'll be our only debug statement. Thank God we caught that. <laughs> Ooh, that r that random thing that would have totally killed us. Although it might have actually broken the loop, so I'm not sure what that would have actually done. Okay, the debug is going to flow outside of the the redirect, and the uh, the so so the data is going to stay uh, one million. Okay, so we're going to be going through about nine hundred something of these, um, and it is going faster than I thought it would go. Um, so, but not fast enough that I want to keep the stream running during it. So if anyone's out there and anyone has any questions, comments, wants a bagel or something, let me know. Let me quickly check to see if there is anyone here, if I'm talking to myself as always. Oh, hello there. It's good to see you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Person, who I won't say your name unless you want me to. Um, if you have any questions about what we're doing, if you have any, uh, anything you want to do with the computer that I could help you with, please speak up now. If you don't speak up within the next... 30 to 60 seconds, I'm going to go ahead and kill the stream for now, and we'll bring it back once this uh, once this data compilation is, is complete. So you have one minute starting now. And just for my own reference, that was the 20, so 55 seconds now. 50 seconds now. I'm just going to count down time, apparently. That's what I raised to do, apparently. 45 seconds. 40 seconds. Honestly, I don't even think anyone's listening to this, so I feel kind of stupid. But I'm used to that. 40 seconds. 35 seconds. I think I actually messed up my count, but that's okay. Uh, 30 seconds. I think I gave you an extra 5 seconds there. Um, 20 seconds. 15 seconds. Is anybody out there? 10 seconds. Does anybody care? F -f 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 and 5 seconds. 4, 3, why the hell am I counting down? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and kill the stream for now. We will be back later. And we're doing okay, we're at 30 million already. <laughs>